Hi, my name is Freyr Snorrason and I'm going to introduce how I plan to write my autobiography. Uh, in this eco document I will try to recall how I experienced the bank collapse in 2008. The bank collapse shook the world, whole world and the main course of events took part here in Iceland. Icelanders remember former, former UK Prime Minister Gordon Brown using terrorist laws against the Icelandic people to recover the savings of UK citizens in Icelandic banks. But why do I want to write about this period in my life and how I experienced the collapse? The reason for that is that in my memory I don't have a clear vision of the bank collapse. In fact, I don't remember anything of it. So the plan is to try to figure out how I managed to live my daily life without noticing what went on around me. How could this world event go totally unnoticed in my life? I think about myself as a child that grew up in an upper middle class environment. I lived with my mother in the suburbs of Reykjavik and went to my father every other weekend. They got divorced when I was young. I am born in 1997, so when the bank collapse took place, I was 11 years old. At the time, the love of my life and by far biggest passion was the beautiful game of football, or what the Americans call soccer. When I think back, that is really all I can remember. Football was my real passion. Me winning some football games, scoring goals and winning tournament titles. That was my life. Nothing else mattered. This was the golden age of my rather short football career. I could write all day long about some football achievements because those memories dominate my mind when I think about the years 2008 and 2009. But that is not the purpose of my autobiography. I will try to find out how I experienced the collapse or at least try to know what was going on through my mind at these turbulent times. To review how I felt, behave and what I worried about, I used two approaches. First, using my own mind and trying to go as deep as I can to remember this time. The memories that are stuck in my mind must be those who had the most influence on me. Secondly, I also used the method of interviewing my parents, which I thought would give me a clear picture of what went on. There, I was mistaken. Their ability to shed some light on my life was little to nothing. But to my surprise, I had a very protected talk with my older sister Hurun, who provided me with a fresh sight on the bank collapse and gave me a psychological assessment of why I did not remember the bank collapse. <clears throat> my memories. This chapter is about my memories and my memory alone. I will look back and only talk about the things I remember. As I have previously mentioned, football was my driving force at that time. I went to three big tournaments at the period I'm looking into. My team won all of them, and even in the last one that was played in the summer of 2009, people were still traumatized after the failure of the banks. In the semi-final against KR, a good football team in Iceland from the west end of Reykjavik, I first got introduced, introduced to a tactical football setup by the coach. He told us that he we had to lock down the center of the field and let them play to the wings so their midfield player, Albert Guðmundsson, could not get the ball. The same Albert played for the Icelandic national team in the World Cup last summer in Russia. Eventually, we won the game 4-0. In the final game, we faced a team that had defeated us earlier in the tournament. I had never played for an audience this big. There were hundreds of people in the audience with was an outstanding attendance for a sports game in Iceland, especially when we're talking about kids' game. We won the final with two goals against one. Inevitably, football wasn't the only thing around me. After all, my grandfather also died in February 2009. He was my maternal grandfather and had been sick for over a year. I have a pretty clear memory from the moment when I heard that he had died. I was in textile class when someone from the school office came into the class and said that my mother was coming to pick me up. I thought it was strange because my mother never picked me up from school without letting me know what was happening beforehand. She came and took me out, out to our car and on our way she, had, she said that my grandfather Halter had died that morning. We drove to the hospital and on our way into the ward we met my uncle and his crying daughter. Little further down the hall, Palli, grandpa's brother, walked up to us, which was the first time I met him. My grandfather was lying in one of the ward's room, so still and pale. I found it unreal that he had passed away. I remember I felt empty. I was not sad, but I was certainly not happy. I just thought these circumstances were extremely unco uncomfortable. The grief came later when the shock was over. In the memory, this day ended there in grandpa's room in the hospital. I don't remember anything else from this day. My other bad memory from this time 
<clears throat> is about my father's drinking, but he is now a recovered alcoholic. After my parents got separated, my father found a new girlfriend. When I was six years old, they had a child together, my little brother. Dad's relationship with the new wife was bad, a lot of fights and alcohol. They had been separated for uh, two to three years in this period I'm recalling in this autobiography. At the time, my father abused alcohol a lot. One night, my dad came home, home drunk with some of his friends after some celebration. I was supposed to be asleep with my brother beside me, but I was wide awake. I envied my little brother for being asleep. I heard what dad and his friend was, were talking about. I remember dad talking about his bad re relationship with the ex-new wife and quite clearly remember him saying that he was ready with a rope in the closet. He certainly did not feel a good about life. I burst into tears and went to the living room to chide him. I was extremely upset. The rest is hazy in my memory. The talk method. When talking to my parents, I had hoped they would be able to uh, help me to recall some thoughts about the financial crash. These talks were not productive. Dad reviewed the bank collapse from a much more political and public standpoint than I was hoping for. I could have guessed it that his approach would be determined by economic reasons since at the time he had recently been hired to the Icelandic Confederation of Labour, IC, where he worked in public relations. My mother said that she always thought about grandpa when she re reviewed the bank collapse. When the riots known as the household revolution occurred, my mom could hear the post and pots and pans being knocked at all the way up to the hospital, which is lo located close to the Icelandic parliament, where all the demonstration took place. That was how she remembered the collapse, mostly. My mother had a plenty of things on her mind at the time, so she did not have the time and, an, and energy to focus exclusively on the collapse of the banks or how, I, or, or how I experienced it. Even though it affected her somewhat financially, it was not the same headache for her like it was for many Icelanders at the time. My mother mentioned that I had only one concern when the banks failed. As a kid, I assumed that the failure of the banks meant that everyone would have less money so naturally, my main concern was that I would not get a PlayStation 3 for my birthday present. I had, of course, set my priorities straight. The talk with my sister gave me a new perspective of my childhood years. She was sure why I cannot recall any memories from the financial crash. She said that as a child I lived in a closed box, so to speak. She was sure that I was totally on my own in my tiny little world. Hurun connected my forgetfulness with my father and the surroundings that occurred when he was with the new wife. Children are never stupid, Hurun said. They know what is happening and they can sense it. She said that I had realized that something was wrong in our life and my reaction was to build some defense, use some defense mechanism to protect myself and the life I wanted to live. The consumption of alcohol at my father's home and constant fighting led me to a grow distant and cold, in little harmony with my feelings and refusing to have a close relationship with my father for the next 10 years with the exception of football. Me and my father could bond over the beautiful game. Hurun's hypo hypo <laughs> hypothesis <clears throat> is that when the banks collapsed I used the same defensive tactic as I used against the circumstances of uncertainty at my father's house. I just blocked it out, ignored one of the biggest events in contemporary history of Iceland, because it made me feel insecure. Our Hurun's collective memory from this time is her trying to raise me up with poor success. But that, but that one time I remember she bawled at me that I had to be good and patient to mom. At the time her job was at risk because the company she worked for was changing CEO and many people in her department were getting fired. I remember that worrying me. Trauma. <clears throat> it is interesting f for me to examine this narrative and how the mind works. Often it is hard for people to review and unwind old wounds of repressed feelings, especially after having a trauma. It is said that when people have experienced trauma, they repress their memories for some time and even try to forget because of the pain that the trauma occurs. Eventually, the repressed memories might pop up, as uh, we know, for example, through the Me Too movement after some unexpected connections or incidents. It wasn't until three years ago that I opened on these emotions of mine when my dad and I went to a psychologist. 
That was part of his program in the AA organizations, one of his 12 steps. Then he first told me that he, f uh, he felt I was always negative towards him and I didn't want to do nothing with him. It was a r it was a rough talk about my memories and dad's drinking. It was for sure much harder with him beside me. But the step we took there was an important one, s something I really needed to do, understand uh, to understand my, both my past and his dilemma with the alcohol. My autobiography will deal with this new opening of my emotions. Horrible.